For over a century, PACCAR has built a legacy of quality and integrity. An unshakable pursuit of excellence has allowed PACCAR to evolve from a small, hardworking Northwest business into one of the world's leading global technology companies. Today, PACCAR's products are known and respected around the world. On February 11, 1905, William Piggott founded Seattle Car Manufacturing to produce logging rail cars. His first customers were logging companies that were building railroads for transporting timber from forests to mills. Seattle Car became an innovator in the railroad field, building the first cars sturdy enough to carry massive logs and developing the first connected trucks. The company's strategy was simple build a premium product to customer specifications. Demand for the company's railroad equipment quickly exceeded the capacity of its Seattle plant, and in 1907, what became known as the Car Company was moved a few miles south to Renton, Washington. Before the move was completed, a disastrous fire destroyed the Seattle plant. Although a setback, the Renton plant was nearly ready for production. The car company built a variety of rail cars for a growing list of customers that included passenger cars for China's Sun Ning Railway in 1908. It built refrigerator cars as early as 1909. In 1911, the company changed its name to Seattle Car and Foundry Company to encompass expanded foundry capabilities. The company merged with Tui Brothers of Portland in 1917 to become Pacific Car and Foundry Company. At the time, Pacific Car was the only rail car builder on the West Coast. In the midst of the Depression, the company found new direction in the early 30s under the presidency of Paul Pickett, son of the founder. The company expanded its products in 1934 and introduced the Carco line of power winches for use in the logging industry. Pacific Car further proved its leadership position by developing Carco Metal in 1936, a strong, lightweight steel for use in dams, bridges, and buildings. World War II challenged every industry to contribute production strength to the war effort. The Renton plant began building for the military and by the war's conclusion in 1945 had built 1,500 Sherman tanks. Pickett's visions guided the company into a new industry when it purchased Kenworth Motor Truck Corporation in 1945. This acquisition laid the keystone for the future direction of the company, even though Pacific Car's main products were still rail cars, logging equipment, steel and winches. The National Highways Act of 1952 spurred the demand for Kenworth trucks. That demand spread across North America, including Canada, where the company established Canadian Kenworth in 1954. In 1958, Paul Piggott met with Peterbilt Motors Company executives and it was acquired later that year with DART, which was renamed KW DART. Exports grew in Mexico, leading to the establishment of Kenworth Mexicana in 1960. In the early 60s, the Structural Steel Division captured the spotlight by building the Space Needle for the 1962 World's Fair. Pacific Car and Foundry's profile had never been higher. The truck business was booming. There were more models, more acquisitions like Gearmatic of Canada, and more divisions to manage. On June 7, 1965, Charles Piggott became the third Piggott to hold the presidency at Pacific Car. The first annual report bearing his signature reported the best results in company history. Ironically, Pacific Car's rail cars were of such high quality, there was not enough repeat business. Rail equipment in 1965 came to only a third of the company's sales. The company had to look elsewhere to grow. Kenworth began exporting truck kits to Australia. It was the start of a carefully considered expansion overseas, which helped the company offset cycles in the U.S. market. By 1968, Peterbilt and Kenworth accounted for more than 75% of company sales and an increasing percentage of the profits. Divisions had authority to manage, but were held strictly accountable for quality, sales, and profits. The strategy began to shift from a broad mix of heavy equipment to an emphasis on trucks. 
Kenworth and Peterbilt, now flagship brands, were defining Pacific Car and Foundry. It was felt the name no longer accurately reflected the scope of the business. It was changed in 1972 to the more concise and elegant Packard. In the 1970s, Packard successfully navigated a series of challenges, including wage and price controls, a recession, and an energy crisis. Packard had to make difficult decisions. The Dart heavy-duty truck line was discontinued and the structural steel division was shut down. Packard purchased Wagner mining equipment in 1973 and Braden Winch in 1977. Packard also took pride in custom projects, like a 90-wheel rig used to move the space shuttle. At the time, quality lapses had American car makers reeling, but Kenworth and Peterbilt were a different story, proven and admired around the world. The first Kenworth trucks were shipped to China in 1978, while imported cars swamped U.S. ports. Thanks to a never-ending insistence on excellence, Packard products were symbols of the power of quality. The Australian plant expanded. Packard International executives circled the world, winning new business, a job that occasionally became an adventure. By 1979, Packard operated 15 plants across North America, Mexico, and Australia. And in 1980, improved its fortunes in Europe by acquiring Foden Limited of Great Britain. The early 80s brought more dramatic economic swings, tougher competition, and greater business pressure. During another recession, the venerable rail car division, last vestige of the original Pacific Car and Foundry, was closed. During this challenging time, Packar focused squarely on trucks and financial services. With its uncommon strength and stability, even when the domestic market was unforgiving, the company made dramatic investments such as a new multi-million dollar technical center. In 1984, Packard marked its first $2 billion year. Soon thereafter came the most dramatic Kenworth ever, the T600. Its aerodynamic shape was a revelation in the Class 8 segment. Peterbilt was next with its new conventional family, including the 379, Peterbilt's all-time best-selling truck. In the late 80s, American industry embraced a hot new trend quality. But Packar had always built and sold the highest quality products. At Packar, quality was no new trend. It was the company's way of life. The 1990s brought Packar one success after another. Production rates, unit sales, and profits all surged to record levels. Packar continued its global focus on being the quality leader in all aspects of the business. Packar acquired Doff Trucks in 1996. Based in the Netherlands, Doff, Europe's most innovative truck manufacturer, represented an opportunity for Packar to compete for the European truck market, one that was counter-cyclical to the North American market. On January 1, 1997, Mark Pickett became chairman and CEO. Packar set new records for revenue and profit that year. 1997 saw the construction of a new truck plant in St. Therese in Quebec. In 1998, Packard acquired Leyland Trucks in the UK, while Kenworth celebrated its 75th anniversary. Six Sigma was incorporated to improve performance throughout Packard, with an emphasis on quality and efficiency. Its strategic implementation has been integrated into all business activities, including Packard suppliers and dealers. Packard Management Information Systems was renamed Information Technology Division, ITD, in 2001, reflecting Packard's transformation into a technology company, collaborating with leading edge hardware and software companies to develop cutting edge tools to enhance manufacturing efficiency, product quality, customer service, and profitability. 2008 brought the worst recession in more than 70 years, but it didn't stop Packard from making the most significant investments in its history in new products, technology, and world-class facilities. A high level of automation and innovation was installed at all factories, including robotic cab painting, robotically welded aluminum fuel tanks, and laser axle alignment. 
Kenworth and Peterbilt invested $400 million to develop the new industry-leading aerodynamic T680 and Model 579, and vocational truck models T880 and Model 567 for North America. DOF introduced its Euro 6 model range, the LF, CF, and XF, completing the most comprehensive engineering design and development program in its history. In 2010, PACAR expanded its engine capabilities with the opening of the Columbus, Mississippi Engine Factory to build the award-winning PACAR MX engine for the North and South American market. PACAR's truck and engine plants consistently set new records for quality, efficiency, and productivity. Recognizing the growing importance of the emerging economies of the world, PACAR increased its investments on a global basis. PACAR established a purchasing and component sales operation in China in 2007 and a technical center in India in 2011. DOF manufactured its first truck built at the new assembly plant in Ponta Grossa, Brazil in October 2013 to expand sales in the South America market. PACAR Parts 17 parts distribution centers worldwide distribute aftermarket truck parts to PACAR's 2,000 independent dealers. With operations in 23 countries, PACAR Financial and PAC Lease set new records worldwide. PACAR is an environmental leader and has pioneered green solutions, including liquid natural gas and compressed natural gas commercial vehicles, hybrid trucks, and zero waste to landfill factories. In a demanding business environment, through economic recession and expansion, PACAR has earned its industry leading position with 34 JD Power and Associates Quality Awards. PACAR is also known as a leader in the communities in which its employees live and work. The PACAR Foundation donates five to ten million dollars in grants annually to support education, the arts, and social services. The company's name and its products have changed. Generations have succeeded generations, but its founding principles have endured. Build a quality premium product the way the customer wants it. And when it comes to being a technology leader, spare no expense. This quiet insistence on being the best has made PACAR one of the most respected technology companies in the world.